This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, your switch to SmackDown in early 2006 after Batista's injury and win the world heavyweight title in a battle royal. How much of a last sudden change is this for you? Well, it was new. You know, I wasn't starting any story or I didn't have any storyline coming into it. It was just a, a brand new, you know, world title that was handed to me because Batista got hurt. Um, you know, Vince McMahon asked a lot of other top guys on Raw if they would switch over to SmackDown and represent the company as champion. And everybody said no. I was always a team player. I said yes immediately when Vince told me what he wanted me to do. So, um, you know, some of the guys just didn't want to switch from Raw to SmackDown for whatever reason. I don't know. Wow, which is incredible, too, especially if you think about it. Hey, you may have the opportunity to be a world champion if you do make the switch. Right. If you make the switch, you're world champion. But, you know, a lot of these guys like Raw better than SmackDown. Mm, interesting. You've always wrestled at the highest level, and you've never been known for taking matches off. Being world champion, though, it's an entirely different beast, is it not? Yeah, you have to be on every night. You're going to wrestle between 20 to 30 minutes, whether it's a house show, TV, pay-per-view. You're going to stay busy, and you're carrying the company on your shoulders. So it's a big responsibility, and you have to be ready for it. You said it right. It's carrying the, the company on your shoulders. And how much pressure do you take on in your mind? Not just your body, but your mind as world heavyweight champion. Well, there is a lot of pressure because you're expected to draw. You know, you're the one that's selling the tickets, the main one that's selling the tickets in uh, you know, the pay-per-view buys. So, you know, you know that in your mind. And you have other talent that's up there, upper tier talent that also um, you know, help uh, sell tickets. But, uh, you know, from a, a champion standpoint, that's your job. Right. You're the one who's got to attract attention. You're the one, like you said, sell tickets. You got to make sure, too, that you're elevating whoever that heel is to make sure that they look good enough to actually challenge you for the title. There's a lot to think about there. You're the man. Yeah, you're definitely the man. You're absolutely right. You finish your run on Raw by losing to Shawn Michaels and uh, Davari interference backfires. What was it like working with Davari? And do you think he could have better been utilized? Oh, he could have been utilized so much more. The kid had natural heat. People naturally just hated him. Uh, he had great heat and he was a great worker in the ring. We never really found that out. But I, I think that if WWE would have utilized him in a different way, he would have been a lot more successful. Well, from the Observer here, Kurt, after losing the SmackDown title at WrestleMania in a three-way, he was constantly trying to push to get the title back. Are you going to Vince, John Laurinaitis, Brian Gerwitz, and asking for the title? Is this true? Is this not true? What say you, according to this report from the Observer? Well, I, you know what? Ray won the title, and I was all for it. I thought it was awesome. I think that Ray uh, winning the title for the first time and representing Eddie Guerrero was an incredible uh uh, a moment sure. uh, but but you know i i'm the best at making people that's what i do and i know Re ray didn't really need that title for very long and i thought that if i took the title and uh had a program with somebody else to bring them up that that's what i wanted to do it's not like i need more titles i <laughs> you know i've won real titles in my life olympic gold medalist uh uh, world champion 1995, two NCAA championships. I won the real stuff. I don't really need the fake hardware. I'm not, it's, you know, not fake. I understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In pro wrestling and sure. sports entertainment. But I wanted to do what I did best, and that was bringing up younger talent and making them. And you thought, hey, the best way to do that is if I have the credence of being the world champion. That rub, what they call in the business, is going to be what's best for them. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're exactly right. Okay. Well, does Randy Orton's suspension play any role in affecting the number of dates you're going to be working on uh, in the upcoming week? So the fact he's suspended, is that like, hey, Kurt, we need you even more here? Of course. <laughs> Randy was one of the top talents. So him going out, you know, the, the, the upper tier guys, uh, it was getting kind of thin. So you don't, you, you're not going to have opportunities to take any time off or any dates. So as long as Randy was suspended, I was going to work full time. 
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.